But as I said before, what better way of starting Rosh Hashanah with an amazing South African kichol, um, which you can eat with chopped herring, which is delicious. So tonight we're not learning how to make chopped herring. Maybe we could do that next week or the week after before Yom Kippur um, for the breaking of the fast. But tonight we're learning how to make kichol. Okay. Now, I'm going to teach it as best as I can. I looked at a few videos, um, how people make, make them. I called a few experts. Um, experts. Um, if you know some, some John Caster ex South African experts like Sheila Allen and a few other ones um, who gave me some really good tips. So the first tip is, number one, is preheat your oven to 200 and put your pan with baking paper already in the oven because they say the best way to make kichel is when the pan is actually hot, okay? So I would suggest at least two pans. You could start off with one pan. This recipe is quite a lot. Probably can make about 60, 70 kichels, but you could obviously split it into two. I mean, split it into half, half a recipe. So just put your pan in the oven now, put it on 200 Celsius, okay? So I'm gonna do that right now. I'm turning my oven on to 200 and also make sure you don't put it on the top rack. Try to put it in the middle rack because we don't want to burn it. Um, in the middle rack is the best because um, it doesn't burn. We don't want to burn it. Okay? So, hi guys. <laughs> okay, so put it in. We're going to put it in while we're making the dough, okay? So everybody start off with your bowl. Take your bowl and we are going to learn how to make it. Okay, so before we start, um, I'm just letting you know that the experts, the kichel experts, actually use a spaghetti or a pasta maker um, to make it, to make the dough extremely thin. Now, tonight we are using a rolling pin, or um, some people who might be on tonight are using, you can even use a wine bottle or a whiskey bottle to roll it out, just be careful not to break it. Um, yes, it's on that. So works, we're but just letting you know that, as I said, the experts usually use a pasta maker because it makes it extremely thin. Um, tonight we're using a rolling pin. When you roll it, you've got to make it very, very thin. But don't worry if it doesn't come out too thin, it's still going to be fine. Just letting you know it might not be as, you know, that you see a lot of bakeries have them in South Africa, extremely, extremely thin, but it will taste the same and look the same and just it might be a drop thicker yeah and we wanted a recipe that um, could be done without that machine i want to make sure that we do it we could do a recipe that if someone doesn't have a pasta maker um could be able to do it okay using the old-fashioned way okay so we're starting off take your bowl the first thing that we need to put in is we are putting in the um eggs eggs we're putting in oil and we're putting in salt, okay? So we're starting off with the eggs. So the first thing over here is we are going to take four eggs and we're gonna crack them and put them in the bowl, okay? So remember, four eggs, okay? So I'm gonna crack them in. I'm just putting them in a glass just to check to make sure that they're 100% kosher, which means there's no blood spots. So let's start cracking our eggs. Are you ready? So that's one. Two, three, and four. Okay, so you put the eggs in first, and then the next part is we're gonna do the oil. So it says half a cup of oil, okay? So I'm gonna take my cup, and this one says half a cup, half a cup. So you could use vegetable oil, um, you don't have to use vegetable, you use vegetable, canola, canola, you can use olive oil as long as it's light olive oil, not extra virgin because it's going to taste pretty gross. So I'm putting the half a cup inside, okay, and the last thing what it says before we mix it is we need to put a pinch of salt. So I'm taking my salt over here, can you see the salt? I'm putting a pinch inside. Now what we're going to do is you're going to take your... So say what you've got so far. So so far we have four eggs half a cup of oil and a pinch of salt. Now you can take uh, your mix master or some beaters. I like to old fashioned beaters just so you guys can see it. And I'm going to beat them, okay? Not actually beat them, I'm gonna mix it, okay? 
Okay. So you're just beating the eggs, oil, and salt. Yeah. So just beat it till it till all the eggs are mixed in well with the oil and salt. Okay, literally 30 seconds, okay? Can you see that? It's just really nicely done. Okay, then the next part is the exciting part. <laughs> Not yet. Just kidding. The exciting part is actually learning how to actually roll it out and make it. Okay, the next part is we're doing flour. So what we do with the flour is you'd use four cups of self-rising flour. Now, some people who are gluten-free, there's gluten-free flour, there's almond flour, there's coconut flour, there's different kinds of flour. Um, but try to use self-raising. Now, if you don't have self-raising flour, um, you can use a bit of baking powder. Um, usually we say two teaspoons of baking powder. Um, but because we're gonna be doing baking powder plus the self-raising flour, I would suggest you use four teaspoons of baking powder if you're using regular flour, okay? Now this is self-raising flour, so I'm gonna do four cups. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna do it, we have to mix it in slowly, okay? So we start off with one cup. So I'm gonna first take the mixer, and if you have a mix master, that's even better, and slowly pour in the cup of flour, okay? So I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the beaters on. Again, this is my first cup. So turn it on slowly. And slowly, slowly start pouring in the flour and mixing it, okay? We keep mixing it. And slowly put in the flour. Because what's going to happen, it's going to become very, very thick and become a dough. It's going to turn into a really nice dough. So we got to do it slowly, okay? So that's my first cup of flour. Now it looks almost like, like a cookie, almost like a, like a custard, okay? Now I'm going to do, so it looks almost like a custard, so let's keep going. So do another cup of flour. A whole cup, yeah? We're doing four cups of flour, but before we do that, let's just do the baking powder because we want to make sure it's blended in well. So here's a teaspoon. So we, after we put the one cup of flour, we'll do two teaspoons of baking powder. So remember, for those people who are using regular flour, put four teaspoons, but we're doing only two teaspoons. Because we have the self-raising. Because we're having, because we have self-raising. Okay, so now fill up another cup. We're doing the four cups of... Um, Flour instead of the four cups of wine for yourself, right? <laughs> okay. You could you could also drink while you while you do this. Just make sure you are not drunk enough that you could actually learn how to make the kichel. You put four cups of wine in the kichel. Oh gosh, can you imagine. Okay. Now I just don't want to. So you put the two teaspoons already in, yeah? Yeah. So I put the two teaspoons of baking powder in, and now what I'm doing is I'm putting the second cup of flour. Okay. I'm going to turn on your beaters and slowly mix it in. Okay, so that's my second cup. Now you can see it's starting to become almost like cookie dough, but obviously we need to... It's not too thick. It's thick, but it's not thick enough for yeah. us. Okay, you can see struggling a bit, but it's still good. Make it a little bit faster so that the dough can come up. Okay. Now what I'm doing is I'm putting my third cup of flour. Okay. Oops. There we go. Okay. My third cup of flour. And I'm going to mix it. It's a bit harder to mix, but we'll get there. Okay. Now, whoops, the last cup of flour, um, we'll have to use your hands to mix it. As if you could see with the mix master, 
or that it's getting stuck. Okay, so what you're gonna do with here, obviously I'm using my hands, but pull off as much dough as you can, because now it's gonna get stuck. So the fourth cup of flour, we don't use a mix master, you use your hands to actually fold the dough, okay? So I'm gonna start off, just try to take us as much dough as you can off the beaters. Of course my hands are clean, guys, I washed them before. Okay, it doesn't matter, you're not eating it anyways. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to take, I'm going to take actually a half a cup and I'm going to do half a cup first, mix it in the other half a cup because even though it says four cups, sometimes it's a little bit too much flour. So I'd rather start off with half a cup and then slowly see, gradually see if we need more, okay? So I'm taking my half a cup of flour. Is that half? It is half a cup. Uh -huh. This is half a cup, guys. Okay, and I'm gonna put it on the top and I'm gonna use my actual hands and mix it. Okay guys, because I think this actually might be enough, which actually it's a good, yeah. We don't need four, we need three and a half, I think so. Just feeling that the recipe calls for four, but mixing this texture, it feels good enough that you will really need three and a half. That's why I always say like, do it slowly. They say do it slowly because you might need more later um, once it starts getting very sticky. But three and a half cups of flour is just perfect. I think it's a very good, it feels really nice. And I think it's just perfect that you will only need three and a half cups. Okay, guys? So once you, okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it out of my bowl. Okay. And I'm going to mix it on, I'm going to put it on the table. Okay. And I'm going to punch it down, sort of like what you're doing with challah, sort of kneading it. So I'm going to knead the dough to make sure that it's mixed enough. So that way we are going to split the dough into six different um, balls of dough, okay? So I'm keep punching it down. Punching, punching. Okay, so it has a nice consistency, like challah dough, but obviously it's not challah dough. It's our amazing kichel dough. Okay, so it's good exercise. Keep punching it down. Once you feel it's a nice solid piece of dough, then we're gonna split it into six different pieces, okay? Okay, I'm gonna just show you how it should look. So you see the consistency. Did a bit of practicing, guys. <laughs> a few days in a row trying to make sure that it's perfect. Okay, now I'm gonna just show you. Can you see? This is how it needs to look. Yeah, it's the camera, yeah. Oh, sorry. Okay, can you see that? So great consistency. Okay, now once you've got your dough to look similar to this, we're going to piece it in, we're gonna split it into three different pieces, okay? So just take it and make them into one, two, sort of like what we do with challah. You know how you make, um, for braids, you make six braids or three braids. So we're gonna make them into, it doesn't have to be exactly perfect. Could just be, you know, just because we're going to roll it out. Okay, so we got one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, take the biggest piece. Can you see? Okay, so what I would like you to do is now we're, we're going to do, are you ready? <laughs> is just take a little bit of flour in a cup, okay? So just have some flour ready, just because we're gonna roll it out and it might get very, very sticky, okay? So just put a little bit of flour in a cup, just in case you need a little bit of flour so it's not as sticky, okay? That's why there's extra flour for cups. Now, in your half a cup, put sugar in, because this is where we get the sugar, okay? So 
we're don't you, we're using regular sugar, which is called granulated sugar, or as I say in Australia, normal sugar. Show the packet, the front. Oh here, just a plain white sugar. It's not caster sugar, powdered sugar, just regular normal sugar. Okay. So I'm gonna put it into my half a cup. Okay, because it says half a cup of sugar, but even though it says half a cup, you're gonna need more than half a cup because the way it works, if you know kichel, there's sugar inside, on the top, and on the bottom. Okay, so you want it to sort of half a cup, the regular kichel that you normally get in South Africa. Okay, so make sure you have a surface to roll. We're gonna be working a bit hard today. <laughs> And the other thing you're also going to need is make sure you have a fork and a knife because a fork, what, is a, what you use a fork is to make the edges of the kichel and the knife is just to cut it. Now, some people cut kichel in rectangles, some people cut them in squares, and some people do triangles. One has their different ways of doing it. Tonight, I'm going to do squares, okay? So that's what I'm doing, but you could do make whichever shape you like to make, okay? Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're taking our piece and we're going to roll it as thin as possible. Yeah, it's going to be hard because when it's thin, sometimes it's hard to actually put on the sheet. But we're going to try to make it as thin as possible. Now, where does it? If you have the if you have the pasta thing, then what? If you have the pasta thing, then you put it through the pasta maker, and it does. It already does its job. It's completely thinned out. So you already have. It's already you already have the shape. You just need to cut them into squares. Or triangles, and then um, once you sorry for those people on the pasta maker, once you have them like the whole long pasta thing, you put the sugar is going to come on. So I'll just show you in a minute. Okay, use your pasta maker. We're going to start rolling, and then we'll tell you what to do with the sugar. Okay, so start rolling. Okay, are you showing how I'm rolling it? Oh, sorry. Sorry, just making sure our cameraman is ready. <laughs> Okay, thank you. So we're going to roll it a bit. Okay. Now, I rolled it a little bit. Just show them how I rolled it. Okay. Do it again. Um, I rolled it out a little bit. So those people have a pasta maker. This is what you also need to know. Once it's rolled out, very thin, you take a bit of sugar. Okay. Sprinkle it on top. Okay. Sprinkle it on top. Now, this is the trick. You got to roll the dough with the sugar. Okay, so look at that. It's gonna, when you roll it with the sugar, it helps it thin it out. Okay, so you can see I'm rolling it. And for those people who said they have a pasta maker, you just put a whole bunch of sugar on also, on your dough. You see that? Heaps of sugar on, because it also helps. What thickness would you use with a pasta machine? a good question. I would make it as thin as possible. Whatever your thinnest of pasta is, that's what I would do. Okay, so whoever's using a pasta maker, make it as thin as possible. That's the trick is to make it extremely thin. I don't know if I have, um, of mine's going to be extremely thin because I'm not an expert, but I know I've made it a few times and it tastes really good. That's the main thing for me. Tastes good. And it does taste like kichel. Um, it just might be a little bit thick, but um, what if you could just try as much possible to make it as thin as possible. Now, again, the trick is hard. when you have the sugar, put a bit more sugar on. It helps. It helps the rolling to be easier to roll. Okay. So I don't want to break it either. Okay. So if you can see, we're trying to make it as thin as possible. Without breaking it. Without breaking it, exactly. Because remember, it's on the, the table, so it could get stuck to the table too. So that's what we have to also just make sure. Okay. Okay. So now what I like to do. I might get this part of the thinner because it looks very thick on the camera. I'm gonna cut it off anyways. 
Uh, give you a bit of an aerial view of our Kichel map. It looks like a bit of Africa over here. You got, <laughs> you got the map of Africa there. Can you see that? <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a bit more sugar. Do you want to make sure that it's a bit even now? Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going. I like when things look pretty. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to cut it. I'm just cutting the edges off. Okay. Can you see? You just cut off South Africa right there. <laughs> Sorry. Dan. I just caught off South Africa. Okay, we're in Australia, guys. We're in lockdown. Hello. Okay, we need to be a bit patriotic, right? Okay, now. Get a bit of knife. Yeah, that's actually not, that wasn't cut well. Sorry, guys. I'm going to get a better knife that actually cuts properly. One second. Okay. Give me one second. Now, okay. So I'm going to use a better knife because he's right. You need a sharp knife because of what I just did. I just made a mess out of this. It's okay. You can still cut the bit. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut the edges. You can see so it looks straight. Because you want it to look Yeah, if you have a pizza cutter, definitely better, but we don't yes, have one. Yes, pizza cutter would be better, thank you. We don't have one. But we don't have a pizza cutter, but these knives are actually pretty good too. The you know these like really cool knives that you could buy from Yumi's or Sir John's. The cheapest knives, but cut the best. Okay, so I'm going to cut the ends. This is a bit of a, I'm going to leave him, leave them out there. Oh, you got out of there. Okay, so I'm cutting the ends, the edges off. Okay, then what we're going to do is I'm going to make squares. Okay, well, it's more, of, it's a bit like squares or triangles. It could also be another thing. Whatever shape you want, really. Okay. As I said before, some people make it with triangles, some people do squares, some people do rectangles. Okay, but I just want to show you. Can you, you use a cookie cutter, people asking? Yeah, you can use a cookie cutter. Okay, see, this is quite thin, but it's probably not thin enough. It probably needs to be a little bit thinner, but it's okay. Don't worry about that. Okay, I'm just going to show you the idea. Now what you do is you take a fork. Can you see what I'm doing? Can you show them? Do you see how when you see in the kichel, they usually do in the, they take a fork and they press it on the edges so that it sort of has can they see it you can see a little bit it's not it's hot it doesn't come out exactly in the camera it's still good okay so use a fork and press the edges okay i'm gonna see if i could try can you see let's see if they could get it better we're sort of pressing the edges down okay and now what we're going to do is you're going to take your you're gonna keep going, okay? I'm gonna just take the tray out of the oven so you can see how it looks on the tray, okay? Give me one second. You almost done? Yeah. So I'm gonna do is I'm taking the tray out of the oven and then we're gonna put it nicely on the tray so you can see how you need to put it in the, in the oven, okay? Give me a second. Here's my bread cup. <laughs> okay. It's hot. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm putting my tray down over here. It's extremely hot. Wait, move your phone. Okay, it's really hot, but this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to take, okay, so you could put like, it doesn't grow much. Hold on, I'm going to put it straight. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to put them on, and I'll probably put about, I could put about 10. Okay, so keep going, using the fork, doing the edges, okay, obviously it's very delicate. And you could go thin if you wanted to. Um, yeah, for those people, it's probably even better to go thinner because I would go even half the amount, but I really don't want to break it, okay, because that's definitely not something I want to do. Okay, so you keep going around. now. Some people know like in South Africa that it's on the sugar is on both sides. So what you can do is you can put a little bit of sugar on your tray if you like that. But I'm not going to do that. And then... Yes, oven, sorry, oven was at 200 degrees Celsius. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to keep going. And then what I do at the end, after I do all the sides and put it all in, I sprinkle more sugar on top. And the reason why is because the more sugar, the sweeter it is, the better it is. Rosh Hashanah, guys. This year, we need a lot of sugar. Okay, 
especially with this COVID situation. No, no dieting now. We all need to eat. The only thing we can legally do, guys, <laughs> is eat. Okay. So I got one, two, three, four, five. So as I said, suggested, um, I would put about 10, 10 of them in my tray. So you can see what I'm doing. I'm keep going. And then for those people who are ready, ready to put it in, you're supposed to bake it between six to eight minutes. And why six to eight minutes? Because obviously every oven is different. So in six minutes, you check on it. So it's supposed to look a bit like a light brown look. Um, obviously, I'm sure for those people who saw the photo before, it's supposed to have like a nice light brown look. And then you leave it out of the oven to cool for five to 10 minutes before actually eating it. Okay, so obviously you can see they're not exactly even, but it's okay. Um, I just want to show you, I'm going to do, I want to make it 10 so you actually could see how it's going to look for those people who are still working on their kichel. Here's another one. And we'll put in two more. I'm going to just make it a little bit more rectangle. Okay. So remember, again, you, you do all the sides with the fork. And for those people who want to use a cookie cutter or whatever you guys want to use, um, it's, it, the main thing is that it tastes good and it looks pretty good. Okay, so just finishing my last one off. I'm gonna make sure that it looks really good. Okay. So what I'm gonna do, okay, so you can see there's, there's 10 inside. And then as I said before, I finish it off by putting a little bit more sugar, sprinkling more on the top. And why is that? Because the more sugar, the better it will taste and yum. Okay guys, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put in the oven. You'll just make sure you have your timer on because you obviously don't wanna burn it. Um, and we have heaps more. So as I said, like we made about 10 each one. Each dough should make about, let's say about 15. So yeah, yeah so I think we, as I said before, we can make what, 90 about? Yeah. Something like that because we have about six. So yeah, so. And what a nice thing to put in it, kichel okay, and herring. Okay, so for those people, for the traditional way, so some people ask, what can you use? Now, if you're American, we we'll use peanut butter and jelly. Woohoo! But we're not, but this is not an American dish. Okay, so. So what, before you, you hold me, before you, someone asked, you leave it out for 10 minutes before you eat, but you can. Um, oh, okay. So you can, I'm saying if you want to eat it right away. Okay? But you can definitely put it in the fridge. But you could, you, I wouldn't put it in the fridge. I would actually put it in a container. And I would get a container that you could actually a plastic tub, a or plastic tub because that way it stays fresh because you want it to stay fresh. It could stay fresh for a few days. Okay. So definitely do it like a day or two before Shoshana, put it in a nice closed container and seal it. So that way it's fresh. Now someone's asking why only 10 per tray? Do they expand so much? Um, so why 10? Why not more? Yeah. Why can't you put more on there? Um, because they do expand a little bit, but um, I just like to, you could, if you want, you could put 15, 20, whatever you want, but I just think that, um, yeah, it doesn't expand so much guys, but I do like the idea of not having them like too close touching, together. Too close together. That's just my thing, but you could do what you want. You could try whichever way you want to do it. Um, and I was saying before, if you're Australian, you could have Vegemite and margarine, but the traditional way. Yes. Guys, the traditional way is having it with chopped herring. Now there's chopped herring, there's Danish herring, there's schmaltz herring. Oh, I even had some herring. with peanut butter the night. I love it with peanut butter. So I said, I said, that's the American way. So you're, you be, he became Americanized and I became South African, huh? Yeah. I love I'm talking about tomorrow night, paramedics, um, net wise. It's going to be amazing. Okay, so tomorrow night, at eight o'clock. Eight o'clock, there's, there's a paramedic who is. What's the name? Her name is Natalie name Wise. Is Natalie Wise. She was on the TV Channel Nine TV show. She was on the Channel Nine TV show and Paramedics. And on par with called Param Paramedics. Yeah. Oh, sorry, it's called Paramedics. 
um, and should be really interesting. And for those people who are not really interested in listening to that, <laughs> I have another cooking uh, demo. No? Yeah. Okay. Um, anyway, so... So when somebody's asking, why do you have to heat the tray? Okay, so we're going to say before it's, it's out now, it really should have gone straight in. So I'm actually going to put it straight in the oven or else it's, there's no point. But the reason why you heat the tray, I'm putting it in the oven. Oh, well, it's, it's in the oven. There it goes. Okay. So, um, okay. So some, so I got some tips from some South Africans. They say to heat the tray because it, when it's still hot, um, it just crisps really fast and it just hardens really nicely on the bottom. So that's some opinion. You don't have to. It just. I did a bit of research before I did this kichol night just to find out what other South Africans do because obviously, like as you know, I'm not South African. I lived in South Africa. I've had kichol in South Africa, but just learning a bit of tips. That's what some people say. Some people say do triangles. Everyone has their different ways, but that's one of the things they told me. That's always to keep it hot. Maybe it's a tradition. Not sure. Right. So a recording of this will be on uh, my YouTube channel, which is Rabbi Raven, and you can find it on Facebook. It will be left on there. Say it again, okay. yeah. For those people who, who don't know, if you've missed this and you actually want to see it again, you can see it on Facebook or on Rabbi Daniel's YouTube channel, which is... And someone asked, do you have to oil the baking sheet? Oh, no, you don't have to oil the baking sheet. You just put it straight onto the baking sheet. Um, you oil it, you oil the pan, but not on the baking sheet. It, I've done it so many times and it comes out really nicely. So six minutes... So six minutes. Check on it. Six minutes. Check on it. And if you think it needs another two minutes, it says six to eight minutes. Okay. So you just because you obviously don't want to burn it. Now some people like it a little bit, um, you know, wider. Some people a little bit more crispier. Everyone likes it differently. So it's always good to check on it. Um, and yeah, if you have any more questions, feel free to message um, us on Daniel Sarah Daniel Raven on Facebook. Um, and I'm hoping after Rosh Hashanah. For breaking of the fast, I want to teach you guys how to make top tier in the South African way also, because I think it will go really well with the kichel. I love, I love all kinds of fish because I'm Russian background, so all herrings, pretty good. Um, and yeah, um, hope to see you guys on the screen before Shoshana, and if not, wishing you Shana Tova and Mitzuka. Hope you have a beautiful and sweet new year, and all the best. See you. Okay, so we're getting in the live stream. Give me a sec. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Have a wonderful, and again, join us tomorrow night.